So in this lecture, I'm going to do just one problem. But this problem uh, has you know different parts to it, and it has to do with this axiomatic system. And we want to do our usual questions related to this axiomatic system. So the first question is, why is this axiomatic system consistent? So let's make some room for an answer here. And we can begin, we haven't really talked about the axioms yet, but just start looking at them. There has to be at least one line with exactly two distinct points on it. So we should go ahead and, and make a line like that. And then there has to be at least one line with exactly three distinct points on it. So I'll draw a line like that. And let's see if the other axioms are true. Given any two distinct points, there exists exactly one line passing through the two points. Oh, well, I guess they're not true. So we need to have lines passing through these different points here. So let's go ahead and do that. And you might be happy there and content, but I haven't actually finished. There's no line passing through these two points and no line passing through these two points. So axiom three isn't correct yet. Ah, there we go. So axiom three holds. We have any two points. We're going to have a line passing through them. And let's look at axiom four now. Given any line L and any point P not on L, there is at least one line through P that does not intersect L. OK, so that's our usual line with a point not on the line and a parallel line existing passing through that point axiom. So let's look at this. Well, there's a little difference. There's at least one line, it says. And typically, we've seen this with there is exactly one line. So let's look at this. We take a line. If we take this line, for example, and any point not on it, there's going to be a line passing through either of those that's parallel to this one. If I take any other line besides this line, it looks like there's only two points on it. So if I take a line like uh, this line, going through these two points and take any point that's not on it, then I can take another point over here, say, and that will be parallel to this line and pass through this point. OK, so I think if you look in, in, at this for a little bit, you can see actually that axiom 4 is true. So this will be a model for the axiomatic system. Each of the axioms holds. Now, as you know, we're going to want a, a second model for this. So let's think about this. How can we get another model? And what we could do is just add a, another line. So this model now consists of the whole thing we had before plus another line. So let's check. Well, there's still going to be the same line with exactly two points on it and the same line with exactly three points on it. And we're still going to have that for given any two points uh, that are different. There's exactly one line that passes through them. This doesn't pass through any points. And this one, well, if we're given any L and any point P not on L, uh, the only thing that's changed is if I take this to be L and take one of these points, well, any line passing through it would be parallel to this line. And so that axiom 4 would still be true. So we have two models uh, for these axioms. And now the next question, uh, we don't need these two models. What we need is, why is the axiomatic system independent? So for that, we have to go through each of the axioms. So let's start with axiom one here. And we want to show that it's independent from the other axioms. So what we want is a model that satisfies these three axioms, but does not satisfy this axiom one. So what is that telling us? If it satisfies these three axioms and not axiom one, that means you can't use these three axioms to prove axiom one, because it's possible for these three axioms to hold and axiom one not to hold. So that's the idea of getting a model then uh, that satisfies axioms two, three, and four, but not axiom one. That would show that axiom one does not follow from axioms two, three, and four, which would make it independent from those axioms. So 
we don't want to have a line then with exactly two distinct points on it, but we do need one with exactly three distinct points on it. So let me draw that in. Now we need to make sure that any two distinct points have exactly one line passing through them, and that is true already. And that given any point L and a point P not on L, well, there are no points P not on this line. So this axiom four will be vacuously true. And so we get then that axioms two, three, and four all hold, but axiom one does not. There isn't a line with exactly two points on it. So axiom one can't follow from axioms two, three, and four. And so axiom one is independent of axioms two, three, and four. So for an axiomatic system to be independent, we have to do this with each of the axioms. So I have to look at axiom two as well now. So now we want to explain why axiom two is independent of the other axioms. So axiom two uh, says there exists at least one line with exactly three distinct points on it. So we don't want to use the same model. We do need axiom one to be true, which requires a line with two distinct points on it. So let me take away one of these points here. Okay, so now axiom one is true, but axiom two is not true at this point. Axiom three, we want uh, any two distinct points have to have exactly one line passing through them. Well, that's true. And, and for axiom four, if we take any line and any point P not on that line, well, there is no point P not on this line. So like before, this is vacuously true. And so we have axioms one, three, and four are all true, but axiom two is not true. And so axiom two does not follow from axioms one, three, and four. And so it's independent of those axioms. And that shows axiom two then does what we want. It's independent of the other axioms. So now let's look at axiom three. So now we need both of these axioms to be true. So we need axiom one, to be true, which we have right now, but we also need a line with exactly three distinct points on it. So let me draw that in. So now axioms one and two are true. We can see axiom three is not true. What about axiom four? If I take a line and any point not on line, is there a line parallel to it passing through that? Yes. This line will be parallel to this line and it passes through uh, these points. Similarly, if I take this to be my line and take either of these points, I'll have a line passing through these three points parallel to this line. So axiom four will be true. So axiom four holds, and so we get axiom three is independent of the other axioms because it doesn't hold here, but the other three axioms do. Finally, we want to deal with axiom four. What does axiom four tell us? We have given any line L and any point P not on L, there is at least one line through P that does not intersect L. Okay, well, this model is not gonna work because axiom four worked for that. Remember, we needed a, a line with two points on it, a line with three points on it. And whenever we before made axiom three true by drawing in these lines that we have, uh, we had axiom A4 was true. How we're going to show axiom A4 is independent of the other axioms. So we either have to add some new points in this picture, adding new lines to our earlier model didn't work. So the idea is then to do uh, something a little bit different than might, you might guess. So the idea is to take away points. Notice if I take away this point, axiom one's not true anymore. But if I make axiom a, the axiom three tr true now, we're gonna to have to draw in lines here. We're gonna have lines with two points on them. So let me go ahead and draw those lines in so axiom three is true. And now again, we can see axiom one is true because there is a line with exactly two points on it. So we have a line with exactly three points, a line with exactly two points, and axiom three is true because any two points have a line passing through them. What about axiom four? Well, if I take this line, say, and this point that's not on that line, do we have a parallel line to this line that passes through this point? 
Well, no, there's only two lines passing through this point and they both intersect this line. So axiom four is not true. We have a line and a point and there is no parallel line to this line that passes through this point. So this would show that axiom four is independent of the other three axioms. You can't get it from the other three. Um, let me comment that there is an even simpler model. If I just remove that line, we're gonna have then axiom four is still not true, but the other axioms are. We have a line with two points, a line with three points. And we still have that any two points have a line passing through them. This line here and this point, still axiom eight, four is not true there. There's two lines passing through this point and they both intersect this line. So this would also be a model showing that axiom four is independent of the other axioms. Now we want to explain why this axiomatic system is not complete. So for that, we just go back to what we did before. We had two models. This was a model by itself. And then this with this extra line was a model that satisfied all four of the axioms. And so we have two different models and they're different. They're non isomorphic because one model has more lines than the other. So you wanna give me a reason why they're different. And again, one of these uh, models has more lines than the other. So that makes them truly different models. And so uh, this uh, axiomatic system is not complete for that reason. Does the principle of duality hold? And we wanna justify our answer here. So we need to look at the duals. So what is the dual of axiom one? There exists a, at least one point with exactly two distinct lines on it, two distinct lines passing through it. So there has to be a point with exactly two lines passing through it. Is that true? Does that follow from these axioms? Well, no. If we look at the picture, we had before, we see that every point here has at least three lines passing through it. These three have three lines passing through it. These two have four lines passing through it. So it's not true that there exists at least one point with exactly two distinct lines passing through it. The dual of axiom one does not hold. So we have a model that shows that the other axioms hold and the dual of axiom one does not. That means a dual of axiom one cannot follow as a consequence of these axioms. So you can't prove that dual from these axioms. And so the principle of duality does not hold. So that would show you that the principle of duality does not hold for this axiomatic system. There was one more problem, a question with this problem. And that is to prove that there is at least one line L in our axiomatic system such that at least two other lines are parallel to it. So we want three parallel lines in our axiomatic system. We wanna prove they exist. Well, I prepared uh, a lecture for this and a presentation and, and the more I thought about it, the, the worse it was because I think uh, actually presenting this is worse than just have you look at the solution. And this particular uh, explanation is given in some solutions to old final uh, problems. This was at the very end of the list of links we had before getting to the graduate student solutions to newer uh, recent tests. So just look at the last link there and uh, look for this problem. This came from a 1994 pro final exam, problem five. So just looked in here for the 1994 problem five question and you'll see the solution to this. And again, that, that, that's easier to look at than uh, me presenting this to you um, in, this, in this lecture. So I'm gonna end the lecture here.